not a secret that we are living in a senior only market. Truth be told, if you are an aspiring developer, you are totally screwed if you follow the conventional advice that runs around YouTube. Before I can tell you what the solution is, we need to understand what is actually happening in the real world. Many people expect the market to change, how the lowered interest rates will restart the hiring machine because cash will be cheap again. And I'm 100% on their team with this, but I have a different take on what is really happening. Most of us, the tech influencers who advise you, got into programming in a period of time where training, mentoring, and hand-holding a junior was the absolute norm and your seniority level and the years of experience on your resume held a lot of weight. Nowadays, that paradigm is last week's news. Businesses want you to be productive from day one and don't want to gamble with their resources, time and money. So right now we are in a very sophisticated market. Every application out there is trying to be more feature rich and provide more value to their customers. The competition for every tech company is ridiculous. So in this video, I'll help you bridge the gap between where you are right now and where you have to be so you can actually get hired. All right, before I give you the actual coding tips that you can apply as you are building your projects and whatnot, I want to give you some overall life advice if I can, based on you know all the fuck ups that I've been through for the past few years. Uh, because if there is anyone who messed up a lot, that guy is your buddy, Christian. There is this thing called the shiny object syndrome. What this refers to, is that sometimes as you are you know progressing or making strides towards a goal you will be shown different opportunities you are learning right now how to code and as you are on youtube uh, binging content as you are scrolling on instagram you might see an ad from some dude that says hey you should start drop shipping because drop shipping is going to be changing your life you'll have a lamborghini and whatever right then you start thinking, you know, this coding thing is quite hard. I'm living in a senior only market. It seems like it's impossible to get a job. Maybe I should give dropshipping a shot. So then you buy that course, you go through it, you build up your website, you copy paste the ads, you copy paste the creatives and you try to run your first campaign and then you fail miserably. $300 on the ads, then $1,000 on the ads. Then you start spending money on the website. Then you start spending money on this plugin and this plugin. And sooner rather than later, you spend a thousand bucks, you've made nothing. And then you realize one thing, that that thing is also difficult. So when you first start something, you are an uninformed optimist, okay? Soon, after a couple of tries, you will start to become an informed pessimist. Now you realize that things aren't as pink as they seemed in the beginning when you first started doing that thing. But then if you give yourself some time, you'll be able to get out of that value of desperation where you are right now maybe, or you will be in the future, where I have been many times, and then you'll become an informed optimist, okay? And then after a while, you understand how things actually work, you understand that this takes a lot of effort. Whatever you are trying to do is gonna take a lot of effort from you. More effort than you initially thought. Probably a hundred times more effort than you initially thought. At some point, you will be successful. But this thing that I just described, this shiny object syndrome, is gonna come in front of you every single time. Do not be fooled by it, okay? There is nothing easy that you can do that's gonna make you a lot of money. You pretty much signed up to the bullshit when you decided to become a programmer. Whatever you'll do, trust me, is gonna require the same amount of effort and dedication. You have to be consistent and consistency, it's one of those things that is being thrown around by, by people. Consistency, believe it or not, it's probably one of the key aspects of becoming a, su a successful person. But being consistent, it's not going to guarantee success. I just want you to understand this, right? Don't think that if you're consistent, you'll be successful. But if you're not consistent, I can guarantee you 100% that you'll not be successful. Consistency is made out of two parts. Okay, let's discuss this. If you are trying to break into the senior only market, you have to be consistent from the perspective of showing up every day, five days a week. You have to put, I don't know, 20 hours a week at least into this over a long period of time. You cannot just, you know, go to the gym and pay a trainer a million dollars and say, I want big muscles. No, 
the trainer can give you tips, can give you advice, but you have to be there squeezing the muscle and lifting the weight. You have to do the work on a consistent basis. If you are working out one week, you won't be jacked. But if you are working out a year and you miss a week, you'll still be jacked. Always improve or increase the strain that you apply to your mind, okay? So when you go to the gym, you don't lift the same weight every single week. You try to at least squeeze another rep, at least uh, add a new set with two extra reps after. At least try to increase the weight of the dumbbell that you are lifting. You have to add more stress on your body. With coding, you have to add more stress on your mind. I have reviewed so many resumes, so many portfolios on my channel. And as you can see, everyone stops at doing the same silly kettlebell exercises from the gym, you know, like, you know, they use the pink dumbbell to do the freaking swings, uh, the, not dumbbells, but kettlebells. They use the pink kettlebells for three years. They are consistent, right? They are showing up but they are not improving or they are not increasing the difficulty of the exercise that they are doing. They are still, still doing Pokemon apps, calculators. Ugh. Brother, ugh. Whenever you feel like you wanna give up coding, right? I want you to ask yourself, is it really worth giving up coding right now, maybe after a year and start something new? Because remember, if you stop now, all the work that you've put in so far is gonna go to waste. Literally, it's gonna go to waste. And you'll have to start something from scratch. You might need six months of recovery after all this pain that you've been going through just to start something again, just to end up in the same position as you are right now in a couple of years, but with a new thing. You don't wanna develop this bitch gene, right? You wanna come in and try to figure it out. This, your job is not to get a job in tech. Your job is to figure out how to learn these things so you can become successful. That's your main goal. And the side effect is you getting a job because every single thing that you learn in this journey is gonna help you massively in your life. I have been lucky when it came to learning how to code and I'm gonna tell you why. It's not because of what you think. But when I was very young, I started teaching myself how to draw. So I started drawing by myself and I was trying to copy like Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck and all this shit. Uh, I was obsessed with it. I was trying to do, uh, design Formula One tracks and stuff like that. And I was spending a lot of time doing that and my mom thought I was talented. So she put me in art school and because I've learned how to draw by myself, I got into art school. Then I learned how to make electronic music. By myself, I learned how to research different things. I've learned how to put things together. And my mom thought I'm a musician. I wasn't, I just learned how to learn. And then I started learning how to code. And for me, I just knew that I just have to apply the stuff that I've applied to learn how to draw, how to make music. I have to apply them here and I'm gonna be successful. And I was successful with that as well. And I'm doing the same thing with the business, with the YouTube channel, whatever. It's the, they are the same principles. They just are applied to different parts of your life. And if you teach yourself right now to quit when is the senior only market, guess what? Other shit will be difficult and you'll end up in the same position again. Find something else besides coding that you are doing as you are learning how to code and you are going through this journey. And one massive one is to uh, maybe get in shape, right? This is, I guess, the biggest problem of everyone. We are not in shape anymore because we are eating junk food. We are scrolling TikTok all day. We are in the house. We don't get vitamin D. We are, you know, living a very sedentary lifestyle. So if you try to have a secondary goal, like getting in shape, like getting 10,000 steps a day, whenever you feel like a piece of shit that uh, is never going to make it, at least you have another thing to fall back onto. And that thing is gonna help you stay consistent with the main thing, right? So they kind of feed into each other. You'll be learning how to be disciplined and consistent with you know, going to the gym and eating clean, and that's gonna help you be consistent and disciplined with learning how to code. How do you actually stand out in this senior only market? What I see a lot with beginners is that they jump in and then just write code for the sake of writing code, which is fine in the beginning because you wanna understand, you know, the basic principles, the basic concepts of how this thing actually works. What really stands out in a negative way is the fact that beginners seem like they've never used an app in their entire life. Have only used YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter, like the social media apps. Everyone is a consumer and I understand it. But if you wanna become a software developer, you need to start using software. 
you need to start paying for software. I have no software to sell you, so don't worry about that. But go ahead and figure out what software is out there. You can look up Zapier, you can look up, look up Calendar, Zoom, Canva, Notion. There are so many softwares out there, so many companies out there that you can research and try to become a user for once. Because when you become a user, when, when you try to use one of those apps to solve one of your problems, you'll start to have ideas. You'll start to understand what is your job if you actually get this job. Like most people don't understand what their job is. I didn't understand what my job was supposed to be when I was learning how to code because I didn't know this tip. Like I have to be a user of some sorts. If I want to make an app for football players, will it help being a football player in the first place? or being like a manager or a coach, of course, because I would understand the thing. If you want to become a software developer, start using software. Then the next thing is to build a long-term project. I spoke on this subject many, many hundreds of times on my channel. This is gonna teach you how to get experience, how to deal with a large code base. This is gonna teach you how the small pieces fit into a bigger puzzle and how complexity actually works. That's how you get experience. And I know I have seen some negative comments on my channel People saying, oh, again, build a long-term project. This is the secret. If you get a job, you'll be working on something for years. If you get Notion, Notion has been in development for like, what, eight years, 10 years? That's the game that nobody talks about for some reason. Preparing for the interview, you need to get your basics down. We have in my mentorship program, which you can apply to by clicking on the first thing in the description, we have three interview calls per week, right? Most people have zero interview prep calls and if they, if they get an interview, they will absolutely bomb it and they have no idea why. Actually, we have four interview prep calls per week. So one basic JavaScript, one advanced, and then two React. And it's absolutely unbelievable how people forget their basics. And uh, they forget things like scope, hoisting, the difference between varlet and const. They don't know how to solve basic algorithms. And these are people that are getting coaching. Imagine people that have no idea that they actually suck at this. I have been onboarding, you know, in my program, people that were uh, previously in a bootcamp. They said, oh, I'm never getting any interviews and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, I understand you. I looked at their resumes and I'm, I understand why they weren't getting any interviews. But then I asked them, okay, so do you think you're good? If you'd get an interview, do you think you would pass it? And they say, yes. And then I asked them the most basic questions, first day questions, and they have no idea how to answer. Or if they know how to answer, right? They don't use the right terminology. So I would highly recommend you to really study your basics. Like people ignore their basics and they go all in into React and they forget the basic stuff about JavaScript. I know this is a free video and I know this is not gonna be listened by anyone because right now people are already clicking off and they're on TikTok looking for day in the life of a software engineer. But they think it's gonna be easy to get there and they're looking for a fancy, you know, object that will help them somehow. No. Then another tip that I wanna give you here to help you survive in, in this uh, senior only market, every job search strategy works, okay? Now there are people who say, you should be networking and you should be messaging people because that's the best way. If you cold apply, you're a loser. Then there are people who say, cold applying is the best thing because otherwise you waste time networking. Other people will say, you should contribute to open source and uh, get uh, to meet people on Discord and blah, blah, blah. Other people say, you should send uh, emails and blah, blah, blah. Other people will say, go to meetups and network there. Look, there is no best way. All those ways work, but you need to choose one, right? Whatever that might be, cold applying. That might be networking. That might be in-person networking, right? In, at meetups. That might be emails. You need to choose one of these, the one that you see yourself doing on a consistent basis, consistency again, and then just stick with that and then find everything you can about that, right? So if you choose cold applying, find someone that can apply for you, find software that can apply for you, pay someone to give you three types of resumes and then send those three types of resumes and then see which one gets you the most hits. I'm not gonna give you a resume because I don't have one for sale. It's in my program, but you can find people that can give you resumes, right? So you need to choose one thing and make it work for yourself, right? If you join my program and my mentorship, I'm gonna give you instructions. I'm gonna make your life way easier. But at the end of the day, 
you are the person that is in control. It's scary, right? Because you cannot blame anyone. You cannot blame the senior only market. You cannot blame the AI. You cannot blame the layoffs. It's just you. A really good movie that you could check out is called Pursuit of Happiness. I think it's with Will Smith and his son. Uh, you'll see what he went through it. We are all admiring David Goggins, right? We all want to be David Goggins until we have to do David Goggins shit. And at the end of the day, all you have to do is press a few buttons. You don't have to run with broken ankles. You don't have to be in the freezing cold water. You are not in Ukraine fighting with Russians. You are not in Palestine getting bombed. You are not in Indonesia sleeping on the streets. You are living a pretty good life. And all you have to do is to figure out how to keep yourself healthy. Enjoy this thing and just be grateful because you're living in a moment where you can literally learn this shit at home. If you want me to help you with your coding journey, apply for the mentorship call. As I mentioned, we have a shit ton of calls to prep you for interviews. We have a shit ton of calls to help you out with your coding problems. We have a sick community that's gonna be there for you. I have all the projects created for you. You just have to follow them. The entire course is made for you. Just check out my testimonials from my page read through them watch the videos understand that i am pretty legit and i'm on your side if you want to play this game the right way and you don't want to waste your time you're not an 18 year old anymore then you need a coach you need a mentor that's going to be on your side as you're doing the work i'm going to remove the bullshit from your life you just have to do the work all right cool that's it peace out bye bye